Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, or otherwise strange content. So the other day I was talking to my brother about different Halloween movies that we had to pull out and watch, and my brother said, well, we gotta watch Halloween Town, and I said, oh, I've never seen Halloween Town, and he looked at me with such a disappointed look, and then made me promise that I would cover it on this channel so that I could rectify that mistake of my own childhood. Also, according to you guys, I am contractually obligated to cover them, and uh, I don't have time to get sued, so I guess we're doing this. Also, I know I know you can always see some kind of reflection in these glasses. Um, I've been like messing around with everything. Uh, it's a work in progress. I think it's gotten a little bit better, but in case you see a glare, sorry in advance. It's a small room and there's a lot of light, so we're doing the best we can. So the movie starts on Halloween night. Uh, it looks like literally every kid in the neighborhood is running around trick-or-treating. Uh, except for our main three kids. They are not allowed to go trick-or-treating. Our oldest daughter, Marnie, she's trying desperately to get her mom to let her go to a costume party. But mom, it's just a costume party. You've got to let me go. The whole world is going. Okay, if I don't girls. go, I'll be a freak. But their mom has completely banned Halloween from their house, so she doesn't get her way. The odds were 50%. I get one normal sister. Oh my god, what did he do to you? Jeez. I'm 13, okay? I'm practically a grown-up. I'm certainly old enough to make my own choices. Is there an age for that? I still don't feel old enough to make my own choices. I certainly was not the best decision maker at 13. I don't know about you guys. Um, it does seem a little unfair. I mean, seeing as how Marnie likes weird stuff so much. Yeah, Halloween is like made for her. Yeah, man, she's so crazy. We're all shocked that you won't let her participate in Halloween. I mean, she's a nutcase. Thanks, guys. So her friends go off without her. I mean, my poor little sister should be out trick-or-treating. But look at her. You've kept her from a normal childhood. And she goes into full drama mode. I mean, that whole razor blade and the apple thing was an urban myth, of course. But then all that candy causes cavities and gum disease and those masks everybody wears of these weird kind of toxic fumes inside that make your arms go limp. Oh my god, this kid. He's got big Ben Shapiro vibes, doesn't he? <laughs> Hey, look, I'm a potato. Oh, no, Marnie. It's too dangerous. There are things about vegetables that you don't understand. So this mom takes her sassy kid in stride like most moms in Disney Channel original movies, and she just kind of moves on with her night, and she's like, ah, she'll stop hating me eventually. It gives little kids dumb ideas about there being magic. Like, that helps them prepare for life. Ugh. Why can't you pick some other holiday to get hung up on, like Arbor Day? Trees are important, too, you know? Although trees are important, I will give him that. Trees are very important. But while all this is going on, who shows up but the kid's grandma? She rolls up on a big school bus like like Miss Frizzle. It's like a big magic school bus that stops at a stop sign that just shows up out of nowhere and no one can see it apparently. She and her magic carpet bag that just kind of walks next to her they head to the house to visit their grandkids. Her grandkids. It's not the bag's grandkids. The grandkids don't belong to the bag. Never mind. The littlest girl wants a cookie before dinner, and the mom's like, that's not gonna happen. Marnie's right. You never let us do anything fun. And then the kid just, like, focuses on the cookie really hard, and it starts to magically float to her, and the mom's like, damn it. Are you eating a cookie? Oh! Mm. The mom is not phased at all, so I'm pretty sure you know where this is going. Good thing she doesn't like liver, eh, dear? Mother! Grandma! The grandmother has all this candy and Halloween costumes for the kids. Uh, I'm a wicked! I'm a ghost! I think I'm a big pimple. And then she says to her daughter, hey, you know Marnie's on her 13th Halloween. And the mom... Yes, I'm well aware of what number it is, Mother. ...just really does not want to talk about that, and they have a fight about it. I can have a normal life here. They can have a normal life here. Oh, being normal is vastly overrated. So yeah, the mom and grandma are witches, and the two daughters, they're also witches, but if the mom can get them past their 13th Halloween without them starting their training, their powers will go away and they'll be able to live normal lives. So that's why she keeps them away from Halloween. I'm not entirely sure why you can't trick or treat, like what, why exactly it ties back to them finding out about their magical powers. I. I think I get it, but still, there's a couple things that I have questions about, but anyway. But the grandma goes up to tell the kids' bedtime story. 
just came by to uh, check that everyone's got their thermostat set to 68 degrees because it's important to conserve energy during the evening hours Dylan, and... Dylan, just uh, get in here. Cut the crap, Dylan. We know you want to hear the story. My story is about a magical place where many different sorts of creatures live together in peace. Like Cleveland? No. No, I don't think she's talking about Cleveland. So she brings them this little picture book about a place called Halloween Town. Because the name of the movie, it's Halloween Town, you get it? Are you on board? There's nothing special about me. Oh, no, no, dear, you're very special. You're a Cromwell. Yeah, not only are they witches, but they're of the Cromwell line. So they're like super powerful witches. Uh, and the mom overhears and comes in and is like, oh yeah, Granny has to leave now. They fight about it one more time, but this time Marnie sneaks downstairs and overhears them. She's very upset that her powers have been kept from her, which honestly, fair. I'd also be very upset. Look at you with your plastic bowls. When you know leftover chicken keeps better when it's back on the bone. <laughs> so wait, is this a common practice that she just reincarnates chicken just to kill them again? That poor chicken. What a roller coaster for it. Uh, so the grandma tells the mom, hey, I'm actually here because I need your help too. Um, and she basically tells her that Halloween Town is being taken over by an evil force and that she needs um, the help of another witch to like help her overpower whatever is causing it. And the mom's like, yeah, that sucks for you, but I don't really care. Mother. There are plenty of other witches and warlocks in Halloween Town. Why don't you recruit one of them? So Marnie runs upstairs, tells her very cynical brother what she just saw, and then decides that she's going to run after the grandma and go back to Halloween Town with her to figure out more about her magical lineage. So for the mom being super overprotective, the kids sneak out of the house right under her nose with no issues while she's um, cleaning up dinner the boring human way instead of using any of her magic. It Fungus, just like magic. No, it doesn't. Which, like, I get that you don't really like that your kids might have magic one day, but, like, you already have magic. It's just, like, don't bother with the Tupperware. Your life would be so much easier. So the kids manage to sneak on the bus um, without the grandmother realizing it, and they take off flying to Halloween Town. And they start seeing these Halloween Town people in their magical forms, so they're like all these different kinds of monsters and magical beings. And I absolutely love the costumes in this movie for how charmingly not good they are. They're, it's kind of a lot of like party store masks and things like that, but I don't know, there's something about it. It doesn't upset me, it just kind of endears the movie to me more. I raised a demon from the underworld and they say big deal, I saw the same thing on Jerry Springer. Okay, I think you're giving Jerry Springer a little too much credit. Some weird shit goes down on that show, but I've never seen a demon being raised from hell. Doing some volunteer work down at the headless shelter. Poor oh, dears. Care for a muffin? <laughs> I baked them for the folks at the shelter. Didn't occur to me they couldn't eat them. No heads! Ugh, that would be a problem. That's very unfortunate for them. So the kids get off the bus from Halloween Town to follow the grandmother, and lo and behold, the littlest daughter has also followed them there, so now all three kids are in Halloween Town. Before they can catch up to the grandma, though, um, they run into the mayor. I can't hear you. I, I seem to have a, a huge lollipop in my ear. Here you are, Sophie. No, thanks. Yeah. Good on you, Sophie. Don't take candy from strangers, especially if said stranger pulls the candy out of their ear. That doesn't seem sanitary. So the mayor hails a cab for them that's driven by this skeleton man. I'm pretty sure his name is Benny. <laughs> he really looks like something off of Crash Box, which terrified me as a child, but he's cool. So Benny's driving him to their grandma's house and he tells them, hey, don't go running around by yourself. Be careful because there's some shady people in Halloween Town. And then points out this one kid who's like the troublemaker kid. We'll, we'll see him later. He's probably animatronic. Disneyland's full of stuff like that. That brand integration with your theme park. Smooth Disney Channel. So the big sister tries to use her powers to unlock the gate. She fails pretty miserably, but the little sister, whose powers are clearly much stronger, she gets it open in no time. I wish Luck would turn into a frog. 
Oh, look at the cute little frog. <laughs> so the grandma is cooking up an instant brew <laughs> when she senses the kids coming up the walk. Boom. Hi, yeah. grandma. Oh, my yeah. star. So the oldest daughter tells the grandma that she knows about her powers, and the grandma lets her stay for a little bit. She just says that they have to get her home before midnight on Halloween night in the mortal world, which is not just a couple hours away like it should be because Halloween Town um, has this weird time thing where like time works really differently so like they probably have a couple of days at least so that's nice for them. Now the glass shows me that some evil force is at work here in Halloween Town. <laughs> oh good lord he does not look like a pleasant fella. Mm -mm. So the grandma's plan is to make up this witch's brew, put it in this ancient talisman, and then the magic should be able to overcome the evil in town. If I can get it lit and install it properly. <laughs> I like that you can tell that she's not spooning anything into the little talisman, but they put in very loud, like, pouring sound effects afterwards. <gasps> oh, wet. I'd also like to take this moment to say Debbie Reynolds, absolutely adorable. She's a great grandma witch in this movie. I loved her. Rest in peace, Debbie. That's what I get for trying to use instant. I like the idea that you can just buy like instant witches brew in Halloween Town, like right along with your ramen noodles and your coffee. <laughs> so they all make a plan to help their grandmother uh, make a home brewed spell since the instant one didn't work. Meanwhile, the mom is at home eating her way through all the candy and watching infomercials late at night. And then she goes upstairs to check on her kids, and they're all gone. So she's probably not very happy about that. I thought you didn't want to go. I decided this really is a dream, so why worry? There you go, Dylan. Push all your feelings down, and then you can deal with the craziness that is life. You're getting the hang of it. And an excellent rolling league. Oh. <laughs> What did that guy say? <laughs> Something your mother. Was he like smack talking one of the other guys? <laughs> They're all on the same bowling team. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting off track. This is what happens when somebody with ADHD tries to do movie reviews. So, I, you know, I think I have an extra Sunday. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh no, Sophie, you did so well with the lollipop before. You don't trust a Sunday that somebody just pulls out of their coat pocket. So the grandma tells the mayor, hey, you know how I've been telling you that weird shit's going down? Well, more weird shit's going down, so you need to do something about it. And he's like, wow, you're right. I'm really sorry I didn't believe you. Now go away, I'm still not going to do anything about it. I didn't take you seriously about this thing at first. I want you to leave this alone. Um, and then the grandma buys the oldest daughter a witch's broom from this Beetlejuice type salesman. <laughs> well, looks like you got your on our windsweeper 5,000. Oh, and then they run into this kid, the troublemaker kid that they saw before. I'm something of a big cheese around here. Maybe I can show you around sometime. Buy you an ice cream. I smell something stinky. It must have been the big cheese. Ooh, burn. If you people were smart, you'd be nice to me. I'm friends with some very powerful creatures around here, you know. You have to be nice to me. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> He's turned into such a wiener. So the grandma takes the oldest granddaughter flying on her new broom. And um, maybe it's just me. It's the way that it's layered with the sounds, I guess. But like... <laughs> I swear, I thought all three of the kids were on the broom with her because it sounded to me like there were more than just the two voices, I guess. I I guess it's just the way that this the voiceover sound is just kind of like layered kind of funny. I don't know. I thought I'd point that out. That threw me for a second. But anyway, they land. They're going to take the littlest girl for a spin. And then the mom catches up to them and they're all in deep shit. So the mom's like, get on the bus. We're going back home. And the oldest daughter is like, I don't want to. I'm not going. And then the mom is just like, well, you're grounded. And that just like takes the wind out of her sails really fast. She's like, not grounded. And then she just kind of like mopes and goes along with them. Uh, but then the mom tries to get directions from these guys. No, Excuse me. What? They're not very helpful, but they do manage to tell her that she's gonna have to wait several hours for a bus. So the kids are like, hey, the mayor said that he could give us a ride. Maybe he can take us back to the mortal world. 
Which makes me wonder if there are other, like, vehicles that people just drive their own cars in and out of the mortal world on Halloween. Like, is there just, like, a big Ford Bronco that somebody drives into town once a year? And here's an awkward little plot twist. The mayor and the mom used to go out together. What's going on here? I have no idea. Somebody runs in with an urgent message for the mayor, so he leaves for a second. What is that all about? Well, obviously, he's mom's old boyfriend. Marnie. I mean, two seconds ago, you just said you had no idea what was going on, and it was pretty, pretty obvious by that point, so I don't think you can really shame him for not picking up on that. So the troublemaker kid, who, by the way, is giving off, like, really big vanilla ice vibes at this point, just thought I'd put that out there, he goes to the grandma and is like, yo, I know where the bad guy is, and he wants to talk to you, and I double-dog dare you not to go with me and talk to him. And she's like, whatever, kid, just take me to see this guy. I gotta get this over with. Take me to him. So Marnie has this fight with her mom where she's like, I am a witch, right? And her mom's like, yes, but shut up about it because I'm trying to hide it from your sister too. Her sister hasn't picked up on it yet. But then Sophie, the littlest daughter, sees the grandma and that other troublemaker kid walking down the street. So Marnie is like, I'm gonna go help them and runs out. Why did the troublemakers get all the attention? Poor Dylan, I do kind of feel bad for him. This is a very stressful situation. So this kid takes the grandma to this sketchy, closed-down movie theater where a bunch of people are just sitting in there frozen. Harriet? It's very horrifying. <laughs> oh god, I would have had nightmares for a year. I don't know how I missed out on this movie as a kid, but I... It's probably for the best that I did, you know what? I've got enough anxiety issues without having to have dealt with this at seven years old. Do you think your magic is more powerful than mine? <laughs> yeah, as if that could happen. Will you shut up? Yeah, shut it, kid. <gasps> no. But then this kid's like, wait, you didn't say you were gonna hurt her, what the hell? And then the mom runs in and uh, tries to help out with her powers. She's a little rusty, but it's all good. But then the bad guy manages to paralyze the mom and the grandmother with his magic. So the kids are on their own. Poor kids. We've gotta save them! We can't save them unless we save ourselves first, come on! Yeah, I appreciate your thinking, Marnie, but Dylan is kind of right. It's like when they tell you to put your own mask on on an airplane before you help somebody else. But like the magic version of that. So now that the kids are completely fending for themselves, they're like, okay, we've got to get all the stuff that we needed for the spell for for the witch's brew. And so they go on this weird, like, scavenger hunt around town to get all these weird monster objects, like werewolf hair from the werewolf hairdresser. Okay. And then they go for ghost sweat from the ghost sauna. Would you get a grip? He can't sweat. He doesn't have a body. You know, I really feel like you should be, you know, expecting weirder things than that, Dylan. Like, that's not even nearly the weirdest thing that you've seen at this point. You gotta pick up the pace, Dylan. So the two younger kids just annoy the hell out of this poor ghost that's just trying to chill out, while the big sister turns the heat up on the sauna by, like, a lot. Kid, I don't appreciate stereotypes like that, all right? Oh, no. Sure, sure. Make fun of the transparent guy. Just because you can see through us doesn't mean we don't have feelings. D you don't have to be disrespectful, guys. Come on. Attendance! Yes. Got it. Okay. Can you imagine if this happened to you? These kids run in, they're just annoying the hell out of you, they're hurting your feelings, and then they just collect up some of your sweat and run out. <laughs> Poor ghost man deserved better. Uh, and then they go get a uh, werewolf fang from the dentist. Why did I say werewolf? I meant vampire. Jesus Christ. I don't know how they just snuck back into a dentist office. Like, there's usually like a receptionist or somebody there to make sure people don't just randomly walk back there. Wow, doc, that didn't hurt at all. Well, after all, I am the Tooth Fairy. He's the Tooth Fairy? I, huh, okay. So Benny, the skeleton cab driver, 
comes up and offers to give them a ride and the littlest girl is like, uh, uh I'm getting bad vibes from this situation. So he straight up tries to kidnap these three kids and then the littlest girl unleashes this dog and he goes chasing after him because he's a skeleton and dogs like bones. Not the dog! God, so if there are just dogs loose around town and there are skeleton people in Halloween Town also, that must be terrifying for the skeleton people. So they go back to the grandma's house, they mix up the potion, and Marnie tries to get it working with the talisman and it doesn't work. But then lo and behold, the little sister, the little one, she remembers the spell, like no problem. <laughs> So she teaches the spell to the big sister and they chant it together and then once that happens then they get it working. So they try to use it to wake the mom and the grandma up, it doesn't work. And then they realize they have to go put it in the giant jack-o-lantern in the town square. So before they can get to said jack-o-lantern, the big bad guy lands in the town square and starts like riling up all of the people in Halloween Town trying to like get them on his side, like some kind of weird political rally or something, but it's very scary. Your moment of destiny has arrived! And funny I should mention political rallies because, uh-oh, the mayor's the big bad guy. <laughs> Did you see that coming? Uh, and the troublemaker kid, Luke, from before, he catches up to Marnie and is just like, please, can I help? And so they basically create a diversion where he puts on her cloak and goes into the town square, and then the mayor kind of lunges at him and attacks him with magic while Marnie gets to the lantern. Oh dear. Aw, poor Luke. I kind of feel bad for disliking him so much now. But before Marnie can actually get the talisman in its place in the jack-o'-lantern, she also gets hit with magic, so she has to kind of use her own magic to kind of will it the last couple feet. <laughs> you see, my friends? The power of evil is stronger than good! Oh god, that image of just like a, a limp dead body just hanging out of a jack-o'-lantern, that's traumatic for kids, man. But she gets the talisman into the jack-o'-lantern, wakes everybody up, and then the whole family teams up against the mayor, who goes into his big spiel about why he's doing all these terrible things, and it's because the mom dumped him? You can have rule with me as my queen, but you chose a human. Like, dude, breakups suck, but you don't have to do all this. But they all join forces and start chanting and like combining their powers, including the brother, Dylan. He's like also secretly got powers. He's a warlock. That's cool. You Cromwells have failed. <laughs> Come on, Dylan, we need you. Believe. Come on, Dylan. You can't be serious right now. But with all five of them working together, they kill the mayor. No! 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 Yay! Marnie and her mom apologize to each other. That stuff coming out of my fingertips is probably just static electricity. Deal with it, Luke. You're a warlock. It happens. Oh, and then Marnie goes to find Luke because she's like, hey, thanks for taking one for the team and saving all of our lives. And it turns out that he's reverted back to his magical form, which apparently looks like this. Especially since even when I was good looking, I didn't have a chance to get in a date with you. A date? Yeah, it was stupid. Aw, Luke. We all like you better now. <laughs> Poor Luke. I guess it didn't turn into a handsome prince though, huh? No, but you did that before when you decided to help me. I never could have done it without you. She should have told him that he looked good the way that he is. <laughs> that bugs me. He's just like, dang, guess I'm ugly now, huh? And she's like, yeah, but you were helpful, so thanks for that. But they all get back on the bus to go home in time, and the grandmother goes with them. So now the grandmother is gonna live with them in the real world. Marnie's mom is gonna teach her how to be a witch, and they're all big, happy witch family now. So yay! Thanks, kids! See you in the afterlife! Oh, and Benny's not evil anymore. I don't really know. I thought he- wasn't he working for the bad guy mayor? Like, I mean, I'm glad that he's not evil anymore, but I feel like there should be some consequences since they had to chase him off with the 
dog, right? But the magical bus flies off, and that's the end of the movie. Yeah, this one was another fun one. I really enjoy this one. Um, and I know this is another, like, classic Halloween movie for all of us 90s kids, so I finally got to experience it. Hopefully all of you guys have a nostalgia trip experiencing it. And yeah, I'm gonna end the video here. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here as always. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, anything and everything you do to support this channel means the absolute world to me. I love reading your comments. You guys make my whole day and I'm just really grateful. So thank you. If you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. <laughs> Bye.